trans equality are being threatened by bathroom bills introduced by state legislatures. Bills which are termed as a bill which is a, it's being termed as a solution in search of a problem. These bills are malicious. They're misinformed. They directly threaten transgender people and the election of Donald Trump doesn't fill me with much joy for the right of transgender people in the US going forward. And though I don't believe a bathroom bill would ever be passed here in the UK, we must keep an eye on the situation abroad and ensure that the British public are well informed so that harmful attitudes are not formed or reinforced here. But Mr Deputy Speaker, it's time the law and our public services catch up, as I've said. In respect of education, the committee recommendation that more must be done to ensure gender-variant young people and their families get sufficient support at school and that schools understand their responsibilities under the Equality Act. A survey this year in further and higher education found that bullying and harassment of trans students and staff appears to be commonplace. Furthermore, with nearly half non-binary gendered respondents to that survey reporting they are considering dropping out of their course and three quarters starting, stating they do not find their place of learning supportive. We have to do more. Can the government... I, I do need to progress, uh, if that's OK. Uh, the government, can the government assure the House that steps are being made, are being taken to create a more trans-inclusive environment in post-school education for trans students and staff. The government's response to the Women and Equalities report into trans inequality identified that the Minister for Further Education would be writing to sector umbrella bodies, highlighting the need for specific gender identity training and the need to ensure trans equality. Has this happened? And in health, we know there's been a massive increase in people, particularly young people, wanting, needing to transition, and many identifying as non-binary. Yet the delay they face in getting access to health and support services is far too long. And furthermore, GPs are too often acting as gatekeepers with the effect they're preventing people from even entering the transition pathway. I was moved to hear the experiences of trans young people denied support at the critical time as they approach pu puberty. It's been clear from our inquiry that trans people encounter significant problems in using general NHS services that have nothing to do with their trans status. Due to the attitude of some clinicians and other staff when providing care for their patients. We heard of the trans cold. This is attributable to lack of knowledge and understanding and even in some cases to out and out prejudice. It's therefore essential there is sufficient training of GPs and a range of other clinicians to understand, that, understand trans identities so that people get the treatment they want and need and is appropriate. And in criminal justice, with every news story that a transgender woman has been sent to a men's prison, our frustration grows further. Our report made it clear there is a clear risk of harm when trans prisoners are not located in a prison appropriate to their affirmed gender and that they get the right support there. It's unacceptable that in 2016 we have a criminal justice system that does not protect all groups on an equal basis, especially as this is costing lives. So in conclusion, Mr Deputy Speaker, I'm proud to now be a member of a parliament in the country that has gone further than most in recognising lesbian, gay and bisexual rights. But the UK is not the leading country in the world in respect of trans rights, non-binary and for intersex people. There has been progress, but not nearly enough. Time hasn't allowed me to cover all the issues raised in our report, but the government's delayed response, seven months, Mr De Deputy Speaker, to, to, uh, to, to our report, raises concerns for us. The coalition government's 2011 Advancing Transgender Equality Action Plan remains largely unimplemented. I repeat the committee's recommendation. The government must take trans equality seriously, draw up a comprehensive strategy with an action plan that addresses the full range of issues covered in our recommendations and soon. Yeah.